welcome to the second supporter video for May. Um, this video is supposed to be like a technique or a um, supply video. And so I was trying to think of what I wanted to show you or talk about. And I thought that I would talk to you about m these mini collages and show you how I look like to use my little bits of paper that I've saved. So what I'm flipping through here is this ring of little cards that I got. Um, I think Kelly Wynn had or did like this little um, free class where she used these little uh, ring cards and it came they came in like a six pack on Amazon and I think she was doing like collaging and jelly printing and stuff like that with them and I really liked the size because I'm a fan of anything that's mini and um, I really liked the idea of having this little ring book of of collages little mini collages so what I've been doing with those is taking my tiny little cast off pieces that I rip off from you know a bigger project and using those in a collage so I have this whole bag of just little pieces that I can't throw away some of them are a little bit bigger than others but they're like smaller than you know a giant piece of collage paper like a paper that I would jelly print on or even like a book page or something like that like these these are small pieces that I've cut off of something um, some a lot of them like the straight kind of rectangle ones are from making books so those are like if I'm making a signature for a book and the area goes you know it ends up being too big I need to cut the signature down a little bit I'll save those pieces or if I'm um, making a collage in my journal and the paper is too big just by a little bit um, sometimes I'll save those pieces and I've only pulled out like half of this bag and I've just spent like a whole minute and a half pulling out all of this stuff and legit I have more so I could have pulled out half of what I've I've plopped out over here and still made the same number of collages um, with all this paper do I have a hoarding problem probably <laughs> but I just can't sometimes I just can't bring myself to throw stuff away like there I had a whole two drawers or yeah two drawers full of just pieces of, of paper that I had torn off of stuff and thrown in the drawer and eventually I did because I never opened that drawer except to put more stuff in it I went through and I threw just about all of it away and so throwing stuff away can be like cathartic and could be good and sometimes I'm in the mood to do it and just say you know what just chuck it but in this case these are the ones that I can't I can't bring myself to just chuck um, so I thought I would share with you again how how I use all of all of these things because I think sometimes you know we save things and then they just sit there and then we don't use them and we look at them and we wish we used them but we just they still just kind of sit there or we don't know what to do with them and i think these little cards or i mean it doesn't have to be these it could be any little you could cut up some watercolor paper into a size and you know collage on that or you can get a little book i also have a little book that I use um, besides these um, cards and the, that is really good um, for collaging on it and and I think the best part about using these tiny pieces is that you don't I feel like you don't have to think as much like for me I'm using 
these because I want to use the, the papers and I'm not trying to necessarily make it perfect. Do I still want it to look good? Of course I do. Am I still gonna, you know, audition things like I'm doing here? Yes. But ultimately, my goal isn't to make something that's perfect, it's to play with these tiny pieces of paper. And this is totally something that you could take on the road, like if you're having have a trip coming up, you could take that, like a bag of, of little pieces and a glue stick. If you're me, you would need multiple glue sticks because I go through those like crazy. But um, you could, sometimes I'll bring all of my collage stuff downstairs while I'm watching TV. And um, when I don't want to be sitting at my, at my desk. So it's something that's very portable, something that's easily doable in a very quick amount of time, and something that is using stuff that has just been kind of sitting and been forgotten about. So you'll see that I, you know, made a whole card. I cut off the, the edges of the card, and some of this is actually a little cut off at the bottom because I forgot that I was still so zoomed in. I'm used to having the ability to be a little lower, um, but because it was smaller, like a smaller substrate, I zoomed in and I just totally forgot. Um, so one of the things that I like to do with um, this type of collage in particular, and I did it I think in my, when I was doing either the 100 day project or one of my iCADs last year, is like making a collage, just like stripes. Um, and it's less stripes and more strips of paper and just going vertically, or yes, no, sorry, horizontally across the whatever I'm collaging on. Um, again, there's not a whole lot to think about, right? You're th I'm thinking about here, I'm thinking about color. I want a good contrast. So I've got that yellowy orange down at the bottom, I have the blue, then I have this pink, and now I'm gonna use the craft with the black. And so I'm not really necessarily thinking a whole lot about composition or anything like that. I'm just thinking what colors look cool together and how could I make this um, pop or you know, whatever. So like here, I didn't want to um, draw a whole ton of attention to that top part because I like the bottom better. Um, so I am putting a piece of um, ledger paper above where I'm going to put the craft paper. So that way it's still neutral, but it's a different color than the craft. And you know that craft paper isn't cut in a straight line at the top, which I think adds a little bit more interest. Now the one thing that I can say is a little bit dangerous about doing these little collages is that you end up with more tiny or tinier pieces potentially than when you started um, which then is a net you know negative pulling away from from your uh, collage stash um, but you know you could wind up with a lot more pieces um, so again, I'm just going through this and finding a piece of paper that I think is cool and um, just kind of slapping them together. You know, in this one I wanted to put down that, that painted piece of book paper and then, you know, I know that I like uh, not straight edges um, and I like to overlap my my wonky edges on top of other pieces of paper so that way they don't get covered up. If they get covered up, well then now it's a straight edge and not a wonky edge. So I lifted that back up and put the paper, the other paper down underneath. And here again, I'm looking for something that is a good 
contrast or complement to what is already um, going on and what colors that I'm already using, what colors are going to look good with this. Where can I get a neutral color from um, and stuff like that. Alright, so I was just talking about how you end up with these little tiny bits of even tinier bits of paper than when you started with. Um, so now here on this little card, I am just going to use those tiny bits of paper. Um, and this is something that I think is fun and kind of freeing because I'm, I'm literally just gluing down little bits and not... I mean, you can't really think about like a composition when you have these tiny pieces of paper. So I'm not really worrying about what it looks like. I'm kind of more just worrying about filling up this little card. And, you know, eventually as things get more, you know, narrowed down and stuff like that, maybe I'll look at, okay, I don't want to put this color next to this color because it's just going to blend in or maybe I do want to put those colors next to each other so then it looks like they're blending in. Um, stuff like that. So, but I think, it, I think it's fun to just have, you know, there's not, there's not really a rule. The only rule is that you're using the, the small bits of paper that you find rather than, you know, the, the bigger ones that you're going to cut down, you know, or even just, using the small bits of paper that came from the other parts, you know, that you've already cut off. You could just layer those on top of each other. Um, so it's just a fun idea and a fun way to not have to throw away those things that you really love the way they look and, um, you know, you want them to be kind of special in some way, if that makes sense. So in this one, I really loved the contrast between the, the pinky orange colors and the black um, marks. 
so for a minute there I was convinced that I was going to uh, leave it just like this so I put it off to the side I was like you know what it's okay the white kind of contrasts with the the black I was like trying to figure out if I wanted to put something else there and then I was like you know what no we could totally leave that we'll we'll circle back to that um, but here is another thing uh, similar to putting the uh, just the tiny bits places I have all of these little strips kind of like I, I said earlier like stripes but more like strips this is legit just strips and I have all of these tiny little strips so I'm going to just put them all on one and see what happens so I'm the thing I'm paying attention to here is changing uh, my colors so I'm doing a cooler color like a blue and then I'm doing a pink and I'm doing a cool and then I'm doing a, a warm so like a pinky color um, and I'm also paying attention some attention to size so we've got a couple thin and then or a few thin rather um, and then a couple thick stripes or strips and um, so just kind of alternating that way so that way I feel like it just kind of makes sense not that I necessarily not like repetition like you could do three or four small strips and then do one big strip and then a small strip and then a big strip and then small strips the rest of the way or something like that but I think it adding that variation makes it more interesting to look at and I think it's more like pleasing um, so then I cut off some of the excess and used that to continue my uh, pat I don't want to call it a pattern because it wasn't a pattern I wasn't thinking about it like a pattern but it kind of ultimately sort of is like a pattern but then even at the top like so I went, you know, a few strips and now I'm going to do the thicker strips to cap it off. And, you know, it may just be me making something up, but again, I feel like it's more pleasing to look at when you have a variation like that. Um, and, you know, while I'm not necessarily worrying about exactly what I'm doing and, and composition and stuff like that. I, I obviously want these things to look cool. So I think that's, you know, one way, hopefully, that I was successful in doing that. So here's where I was looking at them and I decided that I did need to put something underneath that um, strip with the, the black marks on it. And so glue, obviously the idea is for it to be permanent. Um, thankfully, even though it was already dry, I was able to kind of uh, peel it back a little bit. And at first I was going to put the straight edge um, next to the rest of it and then I looked at it and I was like oh no see that looks too much like a vertical line or a stripe going down I need this you know to be facing um, the other way and I had already ripped everything off so I flipped it around and um, just kind of ripped off some extra little pieces to add to make sure to fill in all of that white space and not have it look weird. Um, so there's always a way. There's always a way to fix something. There's always a way to make something 
uh, so that you like it and then you can almost not even tell after you know I'm done that that's what I did which is pretty cool Thank you for watching and thank you for being a member. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you are inspired to try something different um, or I hope that you learned something new and I can't wait to see what you create.